Welcome back everyone to today's Destiny 2 build video that I have to show. This week I've managed to get my hands on the new Hunter's Exotic, the Omnidoculus. Um, playing around with it, it has shown me that invisibility in game is still a must have for certain content. But with this Exotic in play now, it comes with extra damage resistance and a perfect synergy with top, middle or bottom tree void. And this here is what I want to explore and also show you firsthand how you can make use of your invisibility for you, your team and against enemies but mainly show you how powerful bottom tree void is in team play and how you can make invisibility not only useful for you for surviving for 100% time but also making it really reliable with the mods and perks in play. I'm also going to add in some elemental world mods as well as we're going to make full use of our super and grenades and elemental world mods do have a lot of synergy when combined with fast ability regen subclasses or builds. This build here by the end of the video will be a perfect match for PvE players who focus on team survival above all else in endgame, but it does also offer some fun takes in PvP as well. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I really do appreciate it. With that out of the way, the subclass we'll be using is the Hunter's Way of the Pathfinder for complete visibility usage and wide team support on a whole. The subclass I found has the most unique synergy with the new exotic compared to the other subclasses as you're getting a lot of abilities back at once without trying so much. And this is important to know as this is how your subclass and exotic will work wonders. The Omnoculus states that you gain a second smoke grenade charge, gain damage resistance upon being invisible and you gain melee energy upon going invisible. Now with the subclass this will affect two key areas with the tree. Vanishing Smoke will provide the hard pack buff which will boost weapon haste, mobility, recovery and resilience for a short duration. And this is very handy for supporting teammates who don't reach the necessary stats points in these needed areas. And then Combat Provision will offer you two bonuses in one. Damaging enemies with grenade will grant you melee energy and making allies invisible will grant you grenade energy. And this perk along with the Rat King and the Exotic will allow you to gain both melee and grenade energy all at once. The Rat King for some odd reason triggers the Omnoculus Exotic perk every time you go invisible and this here will allow you to easily get a good chunk of melee energy back to which you can then use on yourself or on your teammates. And this will further then grant the necessary bonuses that the subclass offers and this can be repeated over and over again. This is part of what makes the synergy of the set so powerful compared to top tree and middle tree void as everything is being relied on the following three key areas. You don't need specific mods or must have perks on gear and weaponry to pull this all off, but rather a subclass that is freely available for all, a exotic sidearm that you can get when you like, and an exotic chest that is easy to grind for if you're at the right level. Don't get me wrong, top tree and middle tree do have their places in certain builds, but they cater more to solo play and don't offer the same two way option that bottom tree offers. For weaponry, the only thing you're going to be needing is the Rat King if you have it and perhaps a weapon with the Demolitionist or Wellspring perk. Although it would be wise to have a weapon with the Wellspring perk for its wide benefits, Demolitionist will net you more energy for grenades which can be paired up with the buffs in place. My primary for example will be the Rat King Exotic that is a 4 auto monster against minor to major enemies and Cyanogens as well with the Omnoculus. Now I don't have the Catalyst completed to gain a boost in health regen per kill and this would have made the build even more useful to use against tougher adds in endgame content, but it's not that big of a fuss. In terms of performance, it does do nicely against red to major enemies and in PvP, if you're a crack shot with it, you can easily get the drop on players one after another, if you make full use of your invisibility. Now if you don't have the exotic then it's not the end of the world as this leaves you with more room to add in weaponry that can greatly enhance your abilities such as Wild Spring, Osmosis or even Fresh. For secondary, I'm using the Oarings Mar with Spike Grenades, Field Prep and Demolitionist and this will be the main weapon you're going to be using to build up your grenades and activate our elemental worlds in the hand of each other. Now I have to be honest with you all and say that the grenade launcher with the demo perk isn't necessary unless you plan to use your invisibility a lot for yourself and not for your team and um, this can go both ways if you wish. The positive side of using grenade launchers are that they are the best secondary weapon to have for any PvE content in mind since the perk pools are very small and their damage is very impactful. It also matches up well with the elemental worlds being used and the steady stream of support you can get from it is unmatched compared to other secondaries. On the other hand, if you plan to run this setup in PvE content such as Nightfalls and you don't have the right mods attached, 
Everything about the build will go to waste as you can't push forward without taking on champions. It would be better to have a void weapon that has range and can be also used for this or next season champions, such as the beloved Imperial Needle, as it has great stats across the board and purple is quite good in terms of getting the combos you want. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Code Yellow Rocket Launcher with Impulse Amplifier and Lasting Impression, and this will be very useful for increased DPS against bosses and ultras. Rocket Launchers have gotten a big buff thanks to Bungie putting in some thought into them, and now they are great, no, in fact, they are absolutely perfect to use for any type of build for any type of bosses you face against. Not really a lot I need to go into this, but honestly, if you're a rocket launcher, now is a great time to use it. For stats, your main focus will be both the discipline and strength stat area, as we need to further boost our grenade regen speed to constantly activate combat provision and lockdown, and our strength needs to be available to also activate the subdue perks. But also, so we can make use of the hard pack perk 100% when invisible. A good spot to aim for, for both areas, will depend on what your armor stats are and if you have the following modern exotics to pull this off. For a start, 60 to 70 for a 51 second to 45 second cooldown for both strength and discipline would be the ideal spot, as this area will be further supported through the use of this subclass and mods in use. Mods such as Elemental Ordnance, Absolution, Distribution will provide all ability buffs to ourselves and when you combine this with our secondary that will proc the Elemental World mod and our subclass as a whole, you can then have a much faster cooldown on all abilities as you naturally play. We then have Discipline, and naturally this area along with Strength Stat can make use of a certain mod, such as Ashes to Ashes mod to gain super energy on kills, Quantum Wisdom that will grant us 50% intellect boost to our current intellect stat, and the Bomber mod, which will work similar to the Distribution perk, but focusing solely on Grenade Regen. With how high my Discipline is currently at, including mods and buffs in play, I have enough Wiggle Room available to swap up my secondary with Demolitionist, and slot in something else that can be useful for end game and you may want to do the same depending on where you want to use it the most. We then have strength left over, and this stat as shown doesn't need to be any higher than 60 considering the bonuses you're already getting. The only reason why I have it this high on my end is because of armor rolls and taking this into endgame content where I need specific weapons that will help my team out in DPS. Although I do have high energy fire mod to help with damage, taking Rat King into master level content or most raids won't be suitable and would be a hindrance to most of my teammates. As backup, I have added the Radiant Light mod for extra 20% bonus into our strength stat, and at 80, the cooldown with other mods and subclasses will be enough to sustain me long enough to have a useful supply of invisibility when needed. Now, as we cover the main stats, the weapons and subclass section, our next step now will be to break down how the build plays out, the overall pros and cons, and the mods you need to necessarily have. For starters, let's take a look at the mods we could be using. For head, I have discipline, ashes to assets, and font of wisdom mod. Arm, I have discipline, bolstering destination times two, and high energy fire mod. In chest, I have minor strength, because of dampener times two, and elemental ordnance mod. Leg, I have strength, absolution, invigoration, and radiant light mod. Cloak, I have distribution, bomber, and blast radius mod. Way of the Pathfinder has always been a useful subclass to use in solo or group play, but mainly group play, and this subtree perk half of the pack has many benefits to players for extra survival and the most toughest content. Although Mitri Void has a much easier way of activating your visibility by crouching and landing a critical hit, and Top Tree offers you the go-to in terms of invisibility the moment you dodge, Bottom Tree is more flexible for what we're aiming for and will offer the most to use when combined with the Omnoculus. Now, you see, the whole idea of staying invisible to get the main buff from the subclass flowing is very easy to pull off when you have double smoke grenades on hand, and you have a sidearm that can put the perk 100% of the time, as it doesn't require a lot from the user to achieve this. But also, the simplicity of the build is something that should always be taken in a positive way, for those that are new or old, and want a build that they can just put together and go to town from there. In its most simplest form, without further mods or even the vacuum available, you will gain the ability to have double smoke freely available that you can use on your team members to gain the heart attack buff and further gain a boost in all stats as well, which you can repeat as many times as you like. When we add in the mods now, the build becomes the best in class with how fast our grenades and smoke grenades regen 
that we can use 100% all the time, solo or grouped. And upon using our smoke, we gain a massive damage resistance that can allow us to survive an extra shot or two for the most highest damaging enemies in game. We then have the Elemental World mods that also kick in and offer us a boost in intellect regen, which will affect our super and trigger our radiant light mod, which will give all of our teammates a free charge of light, including us for the high energy fire aspect for our weapons. And then lastly, we will of course trigger the hard pack buff for all. The difference between going with all mods and gear and going with barely anything is noticeable, but not by that much. And I personally believe that this sort of build will have strong usage in team coordinate play, and the prime example of that is working alongside a Titan and Warlock user who also have team oriented abilities built to where you can all share into your energies and easily trivialize Grandmaster contents, for example, and reduce the number of deaths overall. Now, of course, the downside to this exotic is how to get it, and the fact that you must wait for the lost sector to be available, that is selling the necessary chests, is quite a pain. You then also have to be aware of what type of lost sector it is and if you can complete it within the necessary time limit, etc. There is a lot to take in and prepare for, and if you really want this build, you're going to have to put in the work for this exotic. Luckily, it shouldn't take you that long. The build overall, though, is a perfect setup for endgame content for surviving as long as you can. The new exotic will provide you with a boost in defense that can be a lifesaver at times, but also the large benefits you're going to be getting from a home is definitely worth investing in for a very long time. Now, if you want survival for hunters, this is the go-to build to use, and once Grandmasters do come, I can see this build being extremely useful for those that want to survive much longer than their own teammates, but also supporting in some way or form. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Type 4 2 content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.